Mercedes-Benz is producing systems for the world market. With the intelligent world drive, we wanted to catch data, to get information from all those markets, to see where the system still needs improvements. And that's why the intelligent world drive is so important for Mercedes-Benz. We have been using map data for quite a while and we have made new enhancements in the last S-Class where we have our curve adaptation and, and dystronic speed adaptations according to map data. We have captured from thousands of kilometers um, many hundreds of situations that uh, now are in the middle of analysis. Um, what the engineers now do is looking at the data so where the system still needs some enhancements and bringing this back into the algorithms. And uh, we are pretty happy that we found so many typical situations worldwide that now help us adapt our systems. For example, in China, very dense traffic. Cars really get in front of you very late and sometimes very aggressive. In Australia, we have seen the, the hook turn, a very typical scenario where you first take left before you finally make your right turn. In Los Angeles, full highways, five lanes. All those scenarios were important to get that our system at the end of the day is really able to drive everywhere. With our international footprint, we are on a good way. And of course, we want to enhance the work that we do on a worldwide basis. It's the war for talents on the one hand side, and it's uh, the closeness to markets on the other hand side. So we're going to improve our footprint in the future. As of today, Mercedes-Benz has the most advanced driver assistance systems on the market where the driver still is in responsibility. The next step is going to be level three, four and five systems when the driver then is taken out of the loop and the car is taking more and more responsibility uh, from the driver. We are working on those systems in two big projects. And our plan is to launch systems for serious production in the years 20 and 21. Concerning the regulations, we have different things to do. Um, first, we have the Vienna Convention that still needs to be uh, um, changed, that the national regulations can allow automated driving. And then many, many national regulations uh, really have to be adapted that fully autonomous driving really can be introduced into the markets. Mercedes-Benz is producing systems for the world market and that's why we have to adapt our systems for any markets in the world. Uh, with the intelligent world drive we wanted to catch data to get information from all those markets um, to see where the system still needs improvements and that's why the intelligent world drive is so important for Mercedes-Benz. We have captured from thousands of kilo kilometers um, many hundreds of situations that uh, now are in the middle of analysis. Um, what the engineers now do is looking at the data so where the system still needs some enhancements um, and bringing this back into the algorithms. And uh, we are pretty happy that we found so many typical situations worldwide that now help us adapt our systems. Now we have met many typical situations um, that you only get in specific um, areas. Let's take Shanghai for example. In China, very dense traffic. Um, cars really get in front of you very, uh, very late uh, and sometimes very aggressive. Um, they kind of push uh, more in, into your lane rather than waiting uh, for you to make place. Uh, so we have a lot of data about that. Um, in, uh, in Australia, we have seen the, the hook turn, a very typical scenario where you first take uh, left before you finally make your right turn. Uh, analysis of those data now helps us to really program our systems that they can cope with those situations. Mercedes-Benz is present on all continents um, and each and every of them has some typical situations um, that you don't see in Germany. Um, 
we have left and right lane traffic. Um, that is something that of course needs to be in the data. We have uh, typical German very you know, regulated and, and normal driving how we know it. Um, this is different in some other markets, more chaotic to some extent. Um, in, in the US with the huge regions in Los Angeles, um, full highways, five lanes, um, all those scenarios were important to get um, that our system at the end of the day is really able to drive everywhere. We have been using uh, map data for quite a while and we have made new enhancements in the last S-Class where we have our curve adaptation and, and dystronic speed adaptations according to map data. If we now look to level 3, 4, 5 systems, um, high definition maps are even more important and that's why we wanted to test the current map information um, on all five continents. RD has a worldwide footprint. Um, of course, the mission control is here in Stuttgart and Sindelfingen, um, but we have big areas in India, uh, in, in the United States of America, also in China, South Korea, Japan. Um, we are using all of them in order to get market-specific information, but also to test our systems in the most important markets for Mercedes-Benz. Overall system responsibility normally and always is here in uh, Germany. Uh, but we would not be able to adapt our systems by ourselves on the worldwide basis. Um, so um, America and uh, China, they have their own uh, test vehicles in order really to, to get market feedback in our current systems. Um, India is very, very good at programming, uh, programming apps at um, CAD engineering, um, software in general. They even have system responsibility in the meantime. Um, and that's how we spread our work worldwide. With our international footprint, we are on a good, good way. And of course, we want to enhance uh, the, the work that we do on a worldwide basis. It's the war for talents on the one hand side and it's uh, the closeness to markets on the other hand side. So we're going to improve our footprint uh, in the future. The next step is going to be level three, four and five systems um, when the driver then is taken out of the loop and the car is taking more and more responsibility uh, from the driver. We are working on those systems in two big projects and our plan is to launch systems for serious uh, production in the years 20 and 21. Concerning the regulations, we have different things to do. Um, first, we have the Vienna Convention that still needs to be uh, um, changed that the national regulations can allow automated driving. And then many, many national regulations uh, really have to be adapted um, that uh, automated driving and fully autonomous driving really can be introduced into the markets. Always and always improving our current systems. This is our evolutionary approach to bring driver systems uh, always on the next and next and next level. Um, and the other thing we are working on is uh, highly automated driving on highways. Um, and also in another project, the fully autonomous driving for robot or taxis and uh, use cases like that. And those systems will keep us busy the next few years. What is unique about the Mercedes approach is that we have a very long history of driver assistance systems. Um, history both in programming the software with our internal engineers, which, which makes us fast and innovative, uh, but also with the safety um, that is related to driver assistance, because safety is not coming by itself. This is a lot of work to really think on what happens if, uh, and the knowledge that we have on that really makes us unique. What is special with Daimler is uh, that we can use a lot of synergies out of the bi different business units. Um, we have a long history in Mercedes-Benz cars, but there is trucks, buses, vans, all that have their use cases uh, from vehicle automation by themselves. And we are in close contact with all our colleagues to really get those synergies within Daimler AG.